I had an older brother, Mark Ellison, and I was pretty much his shadow. But you have to understand when my brother, first it was baseball, mm. and he wanted to see how tough I was. Mm. So he literally threw the baseball at me to see if I would quit. Damn. I did not quit. I said, but if you throw that ball at me again, I'm telling dad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That changed the whole thing. <laughs> Money conversations, we've been making business moves Contemplating how to get it, need to get in tune Different topics, we got options, you can pick and choose If more income ain't the outcome, gotta switch the mood We tryna help you to improve, thanks for asking Road the riches, speak on broker days and past tense Wealthy habits, lately I just wanna stack chips Took a risk and we've been running up a bag since G Vast Quest, quick to make a couple G's Detox, spin knowledge, put you on your feet Bug out, got the plate, make sure to pray before you eat At the table with the winners come and take a seat ladies and gentlemen welcome back this is the thanks for asking podcast show i got a special guest with me her name is coach d yes coach d it's what up coach coach d? D? There you know. Let's get it. <laughs> um this is another uh south side alumni of course so um I want her to introduce herself because I don't think I can do it as good as grand as she is. Okay. How you doing? My name is Coach D from Southside Jamaica, Queens. Chill. This is my backyard right here. Um it's literally we are on the <laughs> Thanks for asking podcast. I appreciate you having me here. We appreciate you um, coming. In order for you to know about my media background, you have to understand it all comes back to Southside Jamaica, Queens and my basketball life. Take it back. Okay, so Growing up here in Southside Jamaica, Queens, I had an older brother, Mark Ellison, and I was pretty much his shadow for 38 years. So he told me if I wanted to hang with him, I had to do the things that he did. So he played sports. Wow. So first I played baseball. Mm -hmm. Mark was a base. Oh, Jamaica I'm saying Mark Central like I. Uh, Mark, for, and of course people don't know if you're not from Southside. Mark was just, if I'm wrong, if I'm, if I'm lying, I'm frying. Mark. Was this coach who used to walk around from when I remember? I, I'm sure you you was you remember him before that, but well, from what I remember, brother. huh? <laughs> I'm sure you remember him before that. I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm younger, so you know, right, right. I was. He was coach Mark. He used to just yes. go around and, and like Baisley Park and just be like, "Oh, oh y'all can play." Yes. Come coach us and tell us how to play ball. Yes. Yeah. So I, I remember Mark. It's yes. crazy. I remember him, and then. Yeah, I'm um, ten years later. We got you on the show. Like that's yes. crazy to me. Well, you have to understand. When my brother first, it was baseball, mm. and he wanted to see how tough I was. Mm. So he literally threw the baseball at me to see if I would quit. Damn. I did not quit. I said, but if you throw that ball at me again, I'm telling daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm that changed the whole thing. I right. <laughs> so I played little league for like two years, and they tried to get me to go downstairs. You know, to the big league. I was mm. like, nah, I'm done with baseball. So then we move to basketball again. So I go to the hole. Boom, he knocks me to the ground. So he wanted to see how tough I was, and I, mm -hmm. I was pretty tough. And then he had me playing against grown men since I was 12. So his mentality was this. Don't let them, don't talk trash first. Mm -hmm. Let them talk trash and you make them pay. So fast forward to my media life. I still have that mentality. Yeah. If you t if you talk trash to me and tell me I can't do something, yeah. then I'm going to do it even twofold than what you thought I could do. So, um, Code 31 Media came about in 2018. Okay. Code 31 stands for competition officially doesn't exist. 31 is my basketball number. I incorporate that into everything I do. Wow, that's gangster right there. I like yeah. that. That's a nice acronym. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and, and the reason why I started Code 31 Media is because um, after he passed, I went down to the city. Mm. You know, I started going to the different, um, you know, um, events for hip hop and R&B. Yeah. And, you know, I started off taking the money at the door and stuff yeah. like that. A little security and stuff. But I used to give people my ideas. Yeah. Sometimes they didn't appreciate it or they would steal my try to steal my ideas and then give me credit. So in 2018, I you said... You remember an idea that they, that they stole? And I mean, they, you know what? It Even if they steal something, they can't execute it like me. Uh, I'm so, just saying, like, what was one where you just... Like, what was the one idea where you was just like... I mean, he they, took that shit? Fuck it. I'm now, they didn't doing really steal it. It's like, okay, so say if you have um, um, 
a showcase that you're doing. Yeah. And I give you the blueprint for it. Mm-hmm. And it it and it comes together and it blows up and then you don't want to give me my credit. You want to say, "Ah, right, we just added D." Yeah, yeah. But literally, I did the whole. I the blueprint the was whole, mine. Ah, so yeah, people have done that to me, but. You yeah. know, pe- com- people have common sense to know that, you know, you're not smart enough to come up with that. Who is mm-hmm. really the brains behind mm-hmm. that? So I never really worry about people stealing my ideas or whatever because they're not going to execute it the yeah. way that I do. Yeah, I feel you on that one. But Ralph McDaniel sat me down in the Queens Public Library when I was developing Code 31. And he said, create your own lane. And put the work in and they'll come to you. Because a lot of people come to him and say, oh, can I just be down with Video Music Box? Mm. But he told me, nah, you don't need my platform. You go build your own platform and you'll get everything that you need. So four years later, you know, it's been coming together. So hold up. You're just throwing names around like that. How do you... How did you meet Ralph McDaniels to the point where he sits you down in well, the library? Well, he works at the Queens Public Library. So, and plus, I um, he does yes. Which yes. one is that? Right here on Jamaica Avenue. Really? The Jamaica. Yeah, he works there. But I, I already had a rapport with him because I've seen ha- him yeah. at other events. Yeah, yeah. So he already knew who I was, and so I was just very gracious of him to just have the you know sit me down for like a half an hour, and he really broke everything down for me. And then my first interview was KRS One. That's why I put him on the cover of my magazine. Wow. Wow. So it's been a blessing to like have my first interview be KRS One. Then mm. I interview Ice T and then along the way Mario Van Peebles and Kenny Anderson and Slick Rick and I got Rock Kim. It took me two years, you got but I, I got T I when he got booed at the Barclays. I was the first Kim one to interview big. him. Wow. Yes. That's that's G favorite artist Rock Kim by the way. When T I got booed at the Barclays. Oh, yeah, he, because, oh as a comedian? Yes, because what happened is I he said it, it would be dope, easy. Dope. It would be easy for him to become a comedian. He should have said it it would be an easier path for me to step in to be a comedian. You shouldn't say that because there's so many comedians that have to go to Chitlin Circuit and stuff. So that was kind of disrespectful. Well, I don't think he should have said it at all because it's not easy to be a comedian. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? That's like saying it's easy to be a rapper. Right. It's not easy. You know right. what I'm saying? You got to right. you gotta work something. You're going to have yes. to work something. Yes. And, you know, it's almost like when you had a job, you've been doing finance, but you want to get into... Uh, you you want to get into HR or something? It's, right. it's two different things. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, not gonna take you as serious because you got tech, quote unquote right. no experience. But I love being more behind the scenes and everything. And before media and all that, mm-hmm. I was you know a basketball coach out here when my brother passed. And again, people, oh, you can't fill his shoes. You can't mm-hmm. do what he mm-hmm. does. But I I like to tell people if he taught me everything I know, why wouldn't you think I could do what he did? Yeah, and yeah. be you know. And so I took 200 kids, including Ale, which is G's son. It is. And and that's how oh, he did? Is. Really? Yeah, yes. she did. So we had a lot of history with that. Yes. Because aside from me cutting her hair. I ain't talking shit. Go home and talking shit. <laughs> well, so like I'm saying, well, you know, <laughs> 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 Yo, don't talk your shit. No, don't talk your shit. You know, we had a lot of history before we yeah. got the head. Yeah. She had my son since he was about eight years yes. old. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And he's still in school now. Right now, he's actually in Utah. Yes. Right now, in college playing ball. But she started out, like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. After me. He was, she right. was the next teacher. And, and the crazy coming thing is, that. they omit right. me. They never yeah. mention me. They yeah. mention John Bell. You. Well, you do. I appreciate I that. You. But I'm I never, if you would, when they talk about LA, they say John Bound coach, and then after that, yeah. they wow. never mention she, me. She got him his first big trophy. Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, he really? Yes. He could have been about nine at that time, yes. nine to ten. Yes. But he was out there running around from Rochdale. He was and all my the youngest. There. He was my youngest for sure, for on sure. the team. I, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Like, I really want to get into this coaching thing because I think there's so much in there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The fact that you still carry the name Coach D. Yes. It seems like it, 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 it shows me that not only did it have a, a, um, a big inf- in, impact on you personally, mm-hmm. but you're really affecting children. Yes. And you got, you're sending your, you got children who you coach that's in college being very productive. I have kids you know that saying? I coach that are in college, that have graduated college, yeah. that have become coaches. So, how, how, do you, how did you become a coach? Like I said, my brother, you know no, what I mean? I mean Once like, he died, yeah. I, I took over his program. 
What he was had, his program? He had the Greg Vaughn Cougars in memory of his coach. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember when the coach got, uh, he was refereeing and he got murdered over here in um, Baisley Park, coaching uh-huh. a um, drug dealer game. That was Greg Vaughn. That was my wow. brother's coach from Mega Evers College. So my brother rep I worked at Medgar's College too. For like 20 years He rep for him And then um, I said You know what When my brother passed I said I'm changing the name To the Mark Ellison Cougars mm. So I, It just was destined For me To take over his program And You know what I'm saying So I did that For a couple of years But then You run into these coaches Out here in Queens Who feel some type of way I'm You're a female You're not worried about coach. coaches from the, We worried no, no, about I'm young telling, I'm telling yeah. you You know why I stepped away okay. From the coaching Because You know what I'm saying You you get a lot of Oh She's a female mm-hmm. Then they try to steal your kids And you know my The funny thing my brother would say They don't want to They don't want to teach these kids anymore They want LeBron and Kobe and, and Mike already But see my brother would take kids Nobody would want Mm-hmm. And mold them into Yeah that was his thing Give me five bums And I right. get you Something but like my that my brother would say But here comes The coaches Like Christopher Columbus Discovered America You see what I'm saying mm-hmm. Once you Build them into something Then here come Those same coaches That didn't want them Yeah And to now telling them Oh I could do better for you If you come to my team Mm. But they always would come back. Even with me, they did the same thing with me, and they would say, "Yo, Coach D, they don't, they don't care about me the way you do. I don't care if you break your leg tomorrow. I'm yeah. still your coach, and I'm still gonna take care of you. So I still have the same relationships with my my kids, even though they're older and grown, and you know, mm. doing their own thing. So my question is, how does somebody? Start a, a like a team or co- like start what you did. I mean, listen, what, what what is it officially? Officially, was it a was it just a basketball team or was it like a, a it was a basketball organization? Team. It was no, a basketball team. It was, it was team. a basketball team. I had no sponsors, nothing. I literally, I'm on disability. That's mm-hmm. another thing. Um, I got injured on my job in 1996, so that derailed my professional basketball career. Mm-hmm. So I try to Im- embed in the kids that. You're a student athlete first Mm -hmm. Because I didn't take school seriously I was smart But I'm one that Yo, I'm nice You know, I don't really got to work hard So instead of me going Division 1 I went Division 2 to Mercy College And it it was kind of a blessing in disguise Because I had a high school coach Mr. Oilman Who pretty much let me run all over him Mm -hmm. And so when I got to college I thought the same thing would happen But I had a little white lady Shaq Carol Shaq the lead Mm-hmm. And um, she let me know that was her team. Oh wow! And I, much, I literally sat my first two years because mm. I wasn't disciplined. Mm. If I played my first two years, I would probably have the school record and score. But I scored a thousand points in my last two years, so I, I, that's I not, that's to not score bad. over a thousand points in my career. That's not bad. Yeah, and almost seven hundred rebounds. Ow. I played power forward at my size. Well, so Hillcrest, what was your number? Right? That Hillcrest on? No, at, I, at Hillcrest I played guard. Well, I played guard and forward at Hillcrest. I got you. But at Mercy, I was power forward. Yeah. I had five M ones against Queens College. I was supposed to go to Queens College. I don't know why my dad sent me to Mercy College. It's funny because nobody knew about Mercy back yeah, then. Yeah. I have a funny story for you about that. So I was playing in a basketball tournament. And Gay Hemphill, she went to the University of Texas. So you know how everybody say, oh, I went to Texas. I went to this, you know, all the Mm. big time schools. So I said, I went to Mercy College. She said, what's a Mercy College? And I bust her up. (laughs) And then a few years later, she goes, Mercy College, right? (laughs) So you can't judge nobody based off of the schools they went to. You don't know their circumstances, you know, as far as SATs and their grades or whatever. So... Well, academic and, and athlete, yes. athleticism is two different things. Yes. So, before I finish, because, you know, in this show, and I want to tell you one of the purposes of it, I want everybody, when they listen to this show, they want to, I want them to get something out of it business-wise. Mm-hmm. So, one of the things that sparked my interest in you is you got you have a team. Mm-hmm. You have a coach, and you, and you did it with no sponsors. No sponsors. So I want you to take me from beginning to end. How do you get? How do you have a team? How do you recruit children? How do you get the com- the the conf? I mean, I, I want to say the confidence. Yeah, yeah, the confidence. 
of their their parents and the trust of their parents that you you know you're gonna take these kids on and you're gonna develop them into something better than they was before they okay, left. So you before know, they as you. you said, you know who my brother was. Yeah, I know who your brother was. So the kids that he coached then grew up and had kids. Yeah, and so they brought those kids to me. Wow. So it was kind of like you know what I'm saying. So that was I, your I was, first team. It, that was my first team um, of kids. Of some of the kids was from my brother. You know, from my brother's playing days um, at, or their coaching, and also word of mouth. I'm from Southside. Yeah. So yeah. they like, yo, that's Mark's sister. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and then they, there was a whole bunch of kids that nobody knew about. Yeah. So we both giving each other a new a new start, a new opportunity to say, okay, who are you? Who am I? Let's come together and let's shock the world. I love to shock the world. Well, I'm I'm so I'm excited just hearing. It was me and my my adopted brother, Coach Jay, who was mm. tight with my brother. He came in and he helped me. It's weird. A lot of people after my brother passed said, "Oh, I got you. I'm gonna help you." Mm. So it's it's like I say, it, it was kind of like I was fathered into taking over the team because yeah. my oldest sister she passed away like five years after Sorry my brother but she's not yeah. into sports Sorry so it was that. like yeah. it was like i went from the youngest to the oldest mm. when he died pretty much wow and so when he passed it was like okay who's gonna take over the team yeah how you know is, is the program still gonna go on and i'm mm. like yeah, I'm going to take over the program, but I'm changing the name now. No disrespect to, you know, he represented for his coach for 20 years. Now it's time for, you know, my brother to get his flowers. But you know what's crazy about it? You, you, you still added Cougars. Yes. That's still an old to, uh, yes. to, the, to the old yes. coach because he worked at Medgar. And that's the name... Yes. Of the Medgar Evers College bas- yes. uh, basketball team, and I also so that's um, dope. Like so, it's still you still keeping in mind, you still keeping the legend going. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like going, that's dope. Yes. And then I I coached at Hillcrest High School where we both attended. My really? brother, yeah, my brother was an assistant coach for the boys when they won the championship with Cali. And the funny thing is, I played against Cali. She went to Queens College, mm-hmm. so we already Cali had a, who? Who's Cali? Cali Persino. She was the head coach. Oh. At Hillcrest, and my brother was the assistant coach. Okay, but he helped her win back-to-back division championships. So again, oh, y'all winning winners. Yeah, we're winners. winners <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I came there and I was um um a uh, volunteer coach for the girls. Yeah, and I just was coming there to you know, you know, give them hope and stuff. And then they was like, you can't leave. Like, I, I didn't plan on coaching. I just, you know, come mm-hmm. support mm-hmm. them because my brother would tell me they had the Fab Four instead mm-hmm. of the Fab Five, yeah, like yeah, yeah, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, they had yeah. the Fab Four. He was like, yo, the girls, they got the Fab Four. So he, and I was so excited. I said, my brother would tell me so much about you guys. But they would not let me leave. They was like, nah, you, you got to be our coach or we're going to lose every game. So I wound up becoming their, their assistant coach. And it was weird. Um, I, I wasn't handling my brother's death well, mm-hmm. and I had panic attacks. And the night before the biggest game against Edison, I believe they were playing. Um, my sister, like I said, she's not really into sports. She mm-hmm. said, "I'm gonna come with you to the game tomorrow because you have to be there for the girls." So I said, "Okay, let me get myself together." And they were so nervous, and I came in there, and I just said, "Yo, we got to do this for Mark." And I just, I had a picture of them, and they lost it, and they won the game. Wow! They upset the number one team, and we won the division championship. What year is this? This was on uh, twenty wait two thousand and ten at Hillcrest High School. Are you making history? So me and How my brother. How, how, did, First, how did Mark sister even there. get in there? I didn't know he was a coach for the yes. for, for high yeah. school. Yes, yes, he was there um, with Cali for about two or three years, and um, they won a division championship, back to back championships. So Dang. he just didn't have his degree. That's why he couldn't become mm. a head coach. I have my I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. Con- yo, yeah. I got both of those. Them things yeah. is not when easy. When you get injured on your job, it's, yeah. it's null and void. So I yeah. had got injured on my job in 1996. Where did you get your bachelor's in? What you get Mercy your ma- College. Well, what did you them. get it in? What oh, psychology for my undergrad and 
human resource management for my master's degree. Yeah. So you know how to run the game. That I, I'm sure that helps you with the management of the team. Um, you know what? Really, um, running the team and stuff like that just came from my brother's teaching. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just watching him over the years, how he coached all these kids. I also played in um, Take It to the Hoop tournament with him. It was funny. They lost the first day, and he was like, man, forget this. I'm bringing my baby sister. And his team was like, your baby sister? Mm. So... We went on a, you know, the three pointers is a two point in there. So they hit it. They gave me a double screen. I hit the game winner. We jumping up and down, me and my brother. And I said, don't do this no more, man. I'm tired of doing, we doing all the work and your teammates get trophies and stuff. He was cracking up. (laughs) And it's funny because I had ran into some of his teammates and they was like, you remember me? I was on that team. I said, yeah, you guys were horrible. So, yeah. So. When you're coaching somebody, uh huh, what are you telling the kid to get them motivated? So the key is to make them believe in themselves. Mm. Once you make them believe in themselves, they'll run through a brick wall for you. How does that happen? Like I remember watching a, uh, it was like an NBA court, and mm-hmm. it was I'm talking about it was Isaiah Thomas talking, and he mm-hmm. always used to say, he said, "Good coaches teach from the neck up." Mm-hmm. And bad coaches teach from the neck down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what he meant by that was, coach, um, most of the the best, the better coaches mm-hmm. are trying to teach you to keep you mentally yes, you prepared. Yeah. It's more mental than anything it else. It is. It definitely is. Like, Ale was my youngest. Mm-hmm. And I would have the younger ones play against the older ones. That's That's how I was taught. Mm. So when they was knocking him to the floor and stuff, now he's like one of the best ones and he's out here killing. Mm -hmm. And he's so used to, you know what I'm saying? Just like me, I was so used to getting banged by the guys that when I started playing against the girls, it was Mm -hmm. nothing. So the key is definitely to mentally have them ready. Yeah. And then once you get them mentally ready, physically is the is the easy part. Yeah, because that's more mechanical thing. You just keep doing it, you get good. But the mental is yeah. Wow, like. I didn't even know that. Like that's yeah, you man, have to yo. even now, even yeah. with media, and I I teach yeah. editing, I mm. teach talk shows, cooking shows. I make people believe in themselves mm. that they can do anything they yeah. want in life. Yeah. I tell them, look at me. I started this in 2018. Mm-hmm. Nobody believed that I could come in front of the camera and do what I do. Yeah, look who my first interview was. Yeah. KRS One. I've interviewed Ti, Rock Him, all these people, Ralph McDaniel's. Everybody didn't expect me to do that. Mm. But I manifested that because I believed in myself. If I didn't believe in myself, bug out. Would, would I have everybody saying, what? It's... Code 31. <laughs> <laughs> so Code 31. <laughs> like it was on cue. <laughs> so, all right, fast forward. I, I really don't want to leave the coaching because uh-huh. what you did in coaching is phenomenal. But we're going to the, um, we're gonna go to your next career. Okay. I also coached at Mercy College as an assistant and York College. Beautiful, beautiful. What yeah. year you coached on in, in, in York? Um, York, let me see, probably 89, I believe. 89, oh, right oh. after I graduated. No, no, sorry. 93 after I graduated. Oh, I was about college. to say, I had a 93 friend. 93 after I had a, I had a college. That's I, assistant up. coach. Sheesh. Yeah. It's funny, and that's where I beat my brother at. I've never beat my brother until I was at York College. As mm. an assistant coach, he came in one day. I said, "More, come on, let's play." Cause see, I knew all the spots yeah, stuff, yeah. and I beat him that one time. And I said, "I don't ever want to play you again." <laughs> I bet. Now it's kind of cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go, choose one not to go. play. <laughs> I am not. Like your boy Miller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yo, you go and get it like that. Yo, you go and get it like that. I choose. Yo, once they lose, they got a time for more and more games. Yeah. One more, one more, one more. <laughs> nah, I gotta go, once y'all. Win, I ain't got time. I got, yeah. I got to go. It was hilarious because when I was at Hillcrest, yeah, the top right, young right, lady right, on right. that team, Chanel. Yeah. She was talking trash to me one day in practice yeah. and Mr. Strong was like alright coach go ahead give it to her I gave her the business she didn't talk to me for three days oh yeah you did yeah. her dirty yeah, I mean like come on like she you're not coming. playing against who I play I played against August Martin when they was the dream team in high school you understand mm-hmm. so this was kind of like a cakewalk I said if I was born in your generation I'd average 50 easy in this league lunch meat 
Yes. Oh, and Shaq say barbecue chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, so that 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 was great. You just make you just you know bringing up so, making me bring up so many memories Yo, enjoy now. Enjoy those things. That's why you live in them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all right to bring it back and look at me in and yeah. and and relive and, and, and relive those moments. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You did. This is why we we here to celebrate you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. So fast forward. Uh huh. 2018. Yeah. Hold on, we're going to get there, we're going to get there, we're okay. going to get there. There's no, um, you, 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 you're on disability. Yeah. You stop coaching for a while. Yeah, I stop. It almost is like a what now moment. I did all, you know, like, I did everything I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. What's the next chapter? Yeah. Uh, that's how I'm gathering yeah. from it. Yeah. You come up with this, uh-huh. this beautiful uh, idea. Yeah. Called Code Thirty One. Am yeah, I saying it right? Yeah, I can't code even do it. Thirty One. So what happens is, say I interviewed you, right? Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the interview, I say, say your name and say it's Code Thirty One, and it just caught on like people would anticipate that they like, mm-hmm. yo, can I say it now? And I'm just like, no, no, no. At the end of the, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that that's kind of like my trademark now. And you come up with this thing, Code Thirty One. Yes. Can I hear the meaning of it? Competition officially doesn't exist. 31 is my basketball number. Ooh, hold on. Which, which camera are we? Are we on this one? Put them on all of them. Put them on all of them, right? <laughs> yeah. Who ya? Yeah. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. We, yeah. We, eventually, we'll get an issue. Yeah, I know, right? Yes, one day, I'm going to be in that motherfucker. Can we get the front? See, listen, the reason why I even came up with the magazine is because I was, you know, writing for other magazines and going hard for other magazines, and they would promise me, oh, are you going to get on the cover? Or I'm going to mm-hmm. feature you, and it never happened. Mm-hmm. So my boy, Jerry Fontillo, I know you know Jerry, from Super Ugly Movement. If you see him, you probably know him. He First, he created Fresh Take and put me on the cover, and he said, D, you need to... Do your own magazine, which I had planned to do, but just one magazine I wanted to put all my greatest moments in. Mm-hmm. But since I created that this year, I just I've been coming up with like new ideas. Like I'm actually getting ready to feature twenty TikTokers and and have their special story in my magazine. That's so dope. I just and I want to go to like private events and then make the whole issue about that private event. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I just you know I come up with different stuff. I'm looking for an animator. If anybody knows of an animator, I'm trying to change all my interviews into animation. I need you to know, know that too. You know how Shaq? Remember when he came in the league yeah, and he had yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, centers yeah, and he yeah, comes yeah, in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I want to animate it. That's what's up. Yeah, I need one of those too. Animate yeah. me. I want to look good. Animate me. My daughter love animation, yes. so you know I, I want to do that. Yes. This this is man. Just looking at everything in here, it's amazing. Yeah, it's like, How did you get KRS One as your first? Okay, so back to Ralph McDaniels. Yeah. He had the 35th anniversary for Video Music Box in Brooklyn. Yeah. So that was actually my first event as Code Thirty One Media, and he was my first interview, and he was very accommodating. He spoke to me for about 10, 15 minutes. That actually was from our second interview. Oh, you interviewed him twice? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so I shout out to KRS One. And I interview MC Shan and Red Alert. Crazy thing is everything comes three sixty full mm-hmm. circle. Red alert I met at Hula Hands over twenty five years ago. We took my mother there for her birthday, me mm. and her and my sister. So I knew Red Alert from then. Then I met him again at um a cool Herc event and then after that I interviewed him with MC Shan at an event. So every time I see Red, he's familiar with me now. Mm. Once I did Code 31 Media and I saw some of the artists again, they was like, Oh, you doing interviews? So it kind of mm. made it a little bit easier for me to get those interviews with people I already had a rapport with in the past. Oh, that's what's up. But yeah, it was just it's just a blessing that, you know. KRS One was my first interview there. It was a lot of people there, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I was I'm grateful for that. So, how did you um, how how does one if somebody wants to start a a, a magazine, how, how do you do that? Um, don't say you don't know because you did it. You know what I'm saying? My, I just believed in myself. I knew I was already writing for other magazines, so I already had an idea how I wanted mine. 
No, no, no. You you telling me the mindset you're in? I'm talking about like the, the physical work. What does one have to you do? You have to. You know what I'm saying? You have to know what you want. No, I don't do know first. what you're saying. You have to know okay. what you want first. Okay. So I already knew that. Okay, I had KRS One. I wanted to format it to where. Actually, Jerry said the whole first issue should be about you and all the people that you interview. Cause it's about code 31 mm -hmm. the other magazines didn't give you that opportunity you make your own opportunity so that's what we did when we formatted that mm -hmm. then i went on canva and i just you know you, you just put an editorial and they have like little samples and then you take out what they have and put your stuff in there right how you feel oh it's wow see i would have never even thought yeah, of that you, you, you download canva mm -hmm. they have a free version and they have a paid version yeah and it, it's pretty much the layout and you just take out what they wrote and then you write in what you want. That's how I did mine. Wow. My photographer, I just took his pictures and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. went from there. Like this is on camera. All this is I wrote on camera. Ah, uh, so it's like templates. Yeah, and there's templates on there and then you write it. Like I went to Cormega. Oh, you met Cormega? Yes. Oh, that's a dude. That's a dude. Oh, man. Yes, Cormega. Shout out to him. I went to his... Yeah, Cormega up in here. His al here. I went to his uh, album Listening Party. The other day. He just, had, he just dropped a new joint. Yeah. I think it's the the, the realness, and, and too. And this is... Yes, and it's, that's this. This, see? this one. Yeah. Ah, yeah. But it's a 20-year gap between albums. And it's, a, and it's yeah. an amazing album. So y'all need to go. I, I, I love the first one. So I, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I haven't checked his out yet because I'm on that yeah, new Nas it album. It's amazing. That King's Disease Three is like. I didn't hear that one yet. Oh my god! It's amazing. What? I think this is his best one with Hit Boy. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm nah. It was his best one. This was okay. This was good, man. This was good. I actually interviewed Randy Edelman. He's like a he does all the like music for the biggest films in the world, and mm -hmm. he actually did a song with Nelly and won a Grammy. Jeez. So I was just like, he said, like, "Do you don't know who I am?" I'm like, "I don't." You know wow. what I mean? Because I I covered the 911 Celebrity Gala mm -hmm. with Soho Johnny. Shout out to. Fred from the Violators. Yeah. I don't know you, if you know the Violators, but um, Violators. he gave me the opportunity to um, cover that event, and I that's where I met Mario Van Peebles. Wow. And I, I got to interview him there, and um, so many, so many rock and rollers and stuff, and um, young lady from Sister Sledge. I got to interview her, and it it, it, it was. You know, all this is crazy to watch people on TV mm -hmm. and then grow up mm -hmm. and then interview them and meet yeah, them. Yeah, those are icons. Like, Melly icons. Mel, I mm -hmm. got to say, don't push me. Cause, you know what I'm saying? I'm singing with a legend. You know, I'm rapping mm -hmm. with a legend. So, yeah, that's what's, yeah. all this stuff is great. You know what I mean? Mm. I got Fat Joe to say, yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price for Code 31. I want to do he get paid for that the way people use well, that shit. Well, I don't, I, I don't pay for anything. That's what I'm saying. It's a blessing to get yeah, these people yeah, yeah. that's, you know what I'm saying, really in the industry to believe in me enough to yeah. do that for me. So, so, so what's next? What's next? Um, I'm actually acting in a few movies. I'm going to hopefully you like launch 25 my TV right show. Now, I'm 51 right now. I'll be 52 in January. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. All right. I didn't, you know. I would never ask a woman's age, but... Uh. I'm okay with that. Listen, people, are, I'm not ashamed to tell my age because I don't look it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. shout out to my mother. You so know like I mean? ball playing, you, you know what I'm saying? You nah, got, it's just my mother, I guess, the yeah. jeans because she doesn't look 80, 81. Yeah. It's a pleasure. I'm oh, can I, can I promote my Of uh, course. This is what we're here for. All right. So um, I have YouTube, Code 31 Media Interviews on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, Code 31 Media, Code 31 Apparel, Code 31 Mag, and the Autism Affiliates. I'm on Twitter, DME31, and I am on TikTok, Code 31 Media. I don't get none of that. I don't got none of those followings, B. I'm following you now. Okay. I'm on you like a hornet. Sorry. It's too so late. So the next... Yeah. yeah. Shout out to G and Bug Out and everybody at Pharmaceuticals. I appreciate y'all. And thanks yeah. for asking me podcast. Yeah. Thanks for asking podcast. And uh, next is to shock the world. You already TV did that. TV show is coming. TV show? Yeah. That's what we talking about, though. 
Yeah, yeah. Just make sure you have a scene come up in here. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. In, yeah, in, I'm doing in, documentaries. Indeed. I'm going to do one for my brother. I'm going to get um, the court redone in Baisley Park in his memory. Wow. So, yeah, I'm working on a lot of stuff for 2023. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Um, I want to say it right. I'm supposed to say my name, then Code 31? Yeah, it's Code 31. It's Code even though I'm not interviewing you, you you can. Know. It doesn't matter, man. Okay. That has to ca- that's okay. carrying on. This is okay. Detox <laughs> Jones, and it's Code Thirty One. Code Thirty One Media Mag Two. Let's get it. All right. This episode has been shot at Barbasuticals. This is our shameless promotion. You can yes. come down and get a cut anytime. Yes, get your cut. I just got my first cut. Shout you know out to saying? G. Shout you out to G. Bug. Shout out to Shout my man to on the boards. Yes, sir. Matt. Yes. Shout out to my man, Matt, Shout on the boards. Shout out to Southside Jamaica, Queens. You know we here. Yeah, man. We out here working, man. Yes. And if you're in Southside, or if you got a story, we would love for you to come down and, and interview you. Business owners, ball players, anybody who has a story in a business. Definitely, because we like to interview Yeah. And, and before yeah. we... And be, is this the camera I'm looking yeah. at? Is this the camera? No. Hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. Not overly popular, who still make a difference, and yeah. we still can learn from you. That's why he's asking you these line of questioning, so people can go find out how to do these steps on their own. Absolutely. And we really appreciate you that. You know, I no, we do. Lot, yeah, yeah. Sure. You're like, no, you just you just got to go out there and get the interviews. Whoever you want to interview, you yeah. got to just reach out to them. That's what I do. Everybody says, yeah. yo, what's your secret? It's not a secret. I ask. No, no, no. No, no, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The steps yeah. that I take is I reach out to the person that I want to interview. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you you kind of build a rapport with them because mm. they have to trust you yeah, sure, sure. because you can't just ask anything to people yeah. and they already are hesitant because of certain people in the media that have made it mm. bad mm-hmm. for other people so when i get my interviews they're already on guard but by the time they right right because mm. my interviews are not very long two mm. three minutes right. i'm in and i'm out Okay. You get what you need, I get what I need, and then I'm done. Yeah. But it's like once you get through the first interview with me, if you see me again at another event, you already know. Okay, we already know. She's com- I'm comfortable with yeah. her. So I make people feel like we've known each other forever. Mm. And I treat people the way I would want somebody to interview me. Why? Thank you, Coach D. Wait, we, it, appre- we appreciate that. Com. We are not Mad getting into that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we are not getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> we are not doing that today. That is Listen, not this episode. You, you can this get, is this. You, you can, can check get this code out. 31 Media Mag Thank you. on madcloud.com. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We out. <laughs> <laughs> try to, try to stop yeah. right?